Yes, we have breaking news. President Bola Metunubu has sworn in a new Chief Justice of Nigeria, and she's by the name Justice Kudirat Kikere Ekun. She's been sworn in as the 23rd Chief Justice of Nigeria at the State House in Abuja. Kikere Ekun will be operating in acting capacity until she's been confirmed by the Senate. She will take over from Justice Ariwola. The newly sworn in CGN took her oaths and took her rightful sitting position in the council chambers on the left hand side of the president. Justice Kikere Ekun is assuming her role as new CGN following the retirement of Justice Olukayo De Ariwala and her nomination and presentation to President Tunubu by the National Judicial Council on August the 15th. Kudirat Kekereyakun is the second Nigerian female jurist to serve as the Chief Justice of Nigeria after Justice Aloma Miriam Mukhtar, who was the Chief Justice of Nigeria between July 2012 and November 2014. Among those who witnessed the event were other Justices of the Supreme Court, the President of the Senate, Goswil Akpabio, the leadership of the House of Representatives, presented by Prof. Julius Nihunveri, the Governor of Lagos State, Babajide Sonolo and immediate past Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Olukayode Ariwala. Other eminent personalities were present. Let's see what the People's Gazette said about the Chief Justice of Nigeria, the acting. She's going to be acting. She has a history with the Imo State election that brought Hopus Odima to power. And also, let's see what People's Gazette has said about the Chief Justice that will be taken over from Justice Olukayode. According to the People's Gazette, they said that Kudirat Kekere Ekun was blocked from the United States for judicial corruption as she emerges as Chief Justice of Nigeria. She was denied entry into the United States following a 2020 controversial judgment that declared APC's Hope Uzodima as Imo governor she is now the current Chief Justice of Nigeria, appointed by Tunubu's government, APC government. Mrs. Kekere Ekun, aged 66, took over the reins of the Nigerian judiciary in acting capacity from Justice Kyle De Ariwala, who clocked mandatory retirement age of 70 on Thursday. Now, the U.S. government rejected the visa application of our new Chief Justice of Nigeria, who was among the panel of justices that sacked PDP's Emeka Ihedia from the Imo governorship seat and announced Mr. Uzodima winner of the hotly contested polls. Former Cross River Governor Donald Duke also spoke about this new Chief Justice of Nigeria. Yes, apart from the recent cases, there's another one where number four became number one. The justices that gave that judgment cannot go to the United States today because they have been denied visas, Mr. Duke said at a memoir launched in February 23. The former governor stressed that the jurists who intended to visit the U.S. to attend a legal conference were barred while their accompanying aides were issued visas. They wanted to go on a retreat. Their aides were given visas, but they were not given. How much disgrace? Can we take as a nation before we say enough is enough? This is far back 2023. Now she's having an appointment as Chief Justice of Nigeria. My opinion, that judgment that brought in Hopo Zodima is the genesis or put fuel to the insecurity in Southeast. It was when Hopo Zodima assumed as governor that we are seeing all sorts of clashes, killings, and all sorts of things, uprisings, unknown government. Southeast was peaceful until Justice Kekere Ekun and her group of justices gave that judgment 2020 that led to her being banned from entering the U.S. And this is the same person that President Bola Metunubu is making the Chief Justice of Nigeria. We, have not even, we are not even talking about what the former Chief Justice did and the other one that served under Buhari. With all these allegations, yet the president had to appoint her. Still continue with the appointment of Justice Kikere Ekun. Even APC supporters were just bragging that she will show 
obedient supporters, Shege. What does that imply? When a chief justice of Nigeria that is supposed to be unbiased is being seen as somebody that is going to be biased before even appointment, and she has this record of corruption under her name. Somebody said that apparently all you have to do to excel in Nigeria politics is to have a profound record of corruption. That's exactly the legacy these old men and women are laying. That's the question I'm asking. What is the legacy this man that is going out has laid? And what will be the one that Kikere Kung will lay? Look at what happened in the Southeast. The insecurity in the Southeast is being caused by the judgment passed by this woman because Uzo Dima has become a thorn in the flesh of Imolites. Insecure. The Southeast was a very peaceful place until we saw the judgment, the kangaroo judgment that brought in Hope Uzo Dima. That they had political tensions. No place is now safe in the Southeast. This is the legacy this woman has brought in. And still, this government went on to appoint her because she's serving an interest. Nigerians are rejecting her, but the government, which claims to serve Nigerians, is appointing her. If you look at widespread reactions, Nigerians are rejecting the appointments of the president. But yet the president will go on to have his appointment, quoting that a number of people who are being paid, who are being sponsored, are in support of his government. Well, we also and always pray this one prayer, and that prayer is that Whatever this government is going to do to bring democracy to Nigerians, they should do it. Whatever policy that they are going to bring so that Nigerians will be awake, will wake up and do the right thing. There's a right thing that needs to be done by Nigerians. The Nigerians have not gotten to that edge yet. They have not been pushed the word enough. Nigerians are still afraid to come out and defend for what they believe in, if they really believe in that thing. If we can have all these things and all these people being imposed on us and we do nothing, then it means that we are subscribing for dangerous days ahead. The INEC also is, a, is a also already a write-off. INEC is a write-off. No trust in, no iota of trust in INEC. The judiciary, with the outgoing of Ariwala and the incoming of Kekereyakun, there's no trust. Anything APC touches, it destroys. Anything APC lays its hand on, it destroys. And we know for a sure that, like I used to say, somebody was abusing me on the comment section that I said, Tinubu is, is a politician. He knows how to play his politics. He knows how to play corrupt, corruption, corrupt politics. And strategizing these people in the place of the judiciary and INEC and every other process that will ensure that he becomes president 27, it would be his priority against any other wish. If you like, be hungry and die as a Nigerian. If you like, don't have anything. If you like, can't feed your family. If you like, don't have jobs. That is not his business. But his business is to fix himself politically, which he is doing. And this is one of it. Nigerians are looking and they are folding their hands. Nothing is being done. One of the reasons why I'm advocating that Nigeria go regional is because some people will be willing to do a particular thing. Some other persons will rise up in their numbers because of tribe and want to stop them. Somebody is asking me why am I advocating for Nigeria to split. I have told you, I'm repeating it again. If we all agree to come out for a protest and there are egos there, some unfortunate elements will come up with a propaganda that Igbos want to destroy Nigeria. And you, who belong to that tribe, will not speak up to quench the voice of the bad ones. So as to silence their voices. But the louder the voice of those that are stopping the protests, everybody will not be in this, in this array. Look at what happened. Igbo must go. Some well-meaning Yorubas did not really speak up. Some leaders did not speak up. They kept quiet. They kept quiet and didn't say anything. So what do you expect? What do you expect? If Nigeria is working regionally and a region wants to go for protest, nobody is stopping nobody. The Yoruba will not stop the Igbo man. The Hausa will not stop the Yoruba man. The Igbo will not stop the Fulani man or Hausa man from protesting. So that is the reality that we are facing today. No much talk. No matter what. Lies cannot overcome truth. 
good will always overcome evil. Let me speak it to your ear. You that you are supporting evil, you are supporting an evil government that is destroying your generations and generations unborn. No matter what, at the end, good will overcome evil. No matter how long lies travel, the truth remains the truth. When the truth appears, lies disappear. So let this government continue in what it's doing against the will of the people. We reject Kekere Ekun. We reject Kekere Ekun. She has an antecedent of corruption. The allegations are there and it's put out there. These people know. So you people cannot claim that you don't know. You know these allegations. You know them better than us. We know for a fact that these guys, the legacy they have brought into the judicial system has eventually destroyed the trust that Nigerians have on the judiciary. The Southeast have not recovered from what Justice Kikere Ekun has caused through the judgment. We are, we are battling with unknown gunmen, gunmen, kidnappers, all sorts. We don't know who is who. Whether it is the indigenous that are kidnapping, whether it is the police in collaboration, whether it is the Fulani Hesmen, we don't know who is who. Southeast is an unsafe place because of that 2020 judgment that brought hope Uzodima. Imagine a number four will get to number. Imagine a number four will get to number one. Explanation, who knows? These are the kind of people we have set up for Nigeria's failure. These people are setting blocks for Nigeria's failure. And as they continue to set blocks for Nigeria's failure, the failure is going to affect everybody. And these people think that if they can just spoil everything, they can travel out. This time around, Nigerians know how to re-strategize. You can't silence everybody. You can't make everybody look stupid. We know what to do. Nigerians know what to do to get good people in power. To get the people, the right people in place so that the people, Nigerians can benefit and heave a sigh of relief. At least for once. I will not say correlations to Kekereku, but all I will say is that posterity will judge. Whatever you've done will live after you and your children will reap from whatever you've done. So goes to Ariwola. Posterity will judge. Whatever you have done will live after you. Already, Nigerians are losing hope com coming, uh, com looking at the 23, 27 elections. Nigerians are losing hope already. There's no hope there. Looking at the people that are being appointed now, there's no hope. So, see, if we are to forget about 27 election, just allow this guy. If you cannot boot him out, if, the, if there can't be revolution, if you cannot take over Asorok, if you cannot do all those things, the 27 election, if you cannot stand our ground, let us allow these people to come and go. But somebody said one thing, that all these things that these people are amassing, just one policy, one decree, we reverse everything. One decree. Somebody is coming. A generation is rising that will arise without fear. That will be without fear. There's an, a sheriff in town. A sheriff that will come. That all these things that have been done, these evil things that have been done, will be reversed within one day. You just take one day for all these things to be reversed. Continue. Continue destroying the, the, the Nigerian trust in, in Nigeria. With all these things, people don't believe in Nigeria. People just get tired of Nigeria. When they see all sorts of criminalities, all sorts of... If they look at the woman that used COVID-19 palliatives as souvenir for her birthday, and still she has an appointment under this government. And when you talk, talk, they, they just look as if you are not inconsequential. Who is this person talking? What is he talking about? That's what they do. Inconsequential. But yet, the country is failing and they are asking, why is the country failing? The politicians have destroyed the country and the same politicians are asking Nigerians to contribute to their country. Where it takes two to tango, if the citizens do their part, why can't the politicians do their part? Why are they sabotaging democracy in Nigeria? It's a shame that we are where we are today. But one day, one day, everybody will answer their father's name.